This diagram illustrates the basic architecture of BizTalk. Basically, on the left side, I have receives, and on the right side, I have sends. These little servers up here indicate a couple different things. For example, you might have a trading partner that sends you files, and they could send those files to you via FTP, HTTP. Most likely, those would be the most common ways. And then you might have an in-house system that could also do FTP, HTTP, or actually just drop a file at a certain place on a disk. And so on the receive side, you have adapters. And these adapters, there's technical adapters for different types of technologies, such again, file, HTTP, FTP, SQL. And then there are also what's called line of business adapters, like SAP, CBOL, and so on, uh, human resources, people soft, whatever. And so this might be some in-house system where you want to pass data to BizTalk and then process it. And so you begin by receiving through a receive port. And a receive port can then actually have one or perhaps many, 5, 10, 20 receive locations on it. So there's a one-to-many relationship between receive ports and receive locations. There's different ways you could actually organize those. For example, if you had four vendors, or say three vendors, IBM, Dell, and Gateway, and they were ordering parts for, from your company, you might have one different receive port for each vendor, or one, one receive location for each vendor, but they would all come to the same port. The reason the receive locations might be different is the transportation protocols might be different, or you just might want to use different directories on the disk. And so, for instance, uh, three different FTP directories could have three different files. Then, when the file comes in, it basically goes through a receive pipeline. Now, out of the box, BizTalk provides two standard pipelines, a standard, uh, basically a, yeah, they call it the standard pipeline, but then there's the XML pipeline. Sorry, the first one's called pass-through pipeline. Pass-through would only be used if you want to pass a non-XML file, a file that BizTalk does not actually parse but can actually be passed through the system. The most common one is the XML pipeline, XML receive pipeline. And that will basically take the files that are coming in and translate them to XML if they're not already XML. At that point, you can also build your own custom, well, first of all, you can build your own pipeline in BizTalk using different stages. And then if you really want to get fancy, you can write your own pipeline in C Sharp or your own pipeline components. For instance, one place I used to work uh, we received the data and the data had a SOAP header on it. And so the pipeline took the SOAP headers and actually promoted them to what's called promoted fields, which is a concept we'll talk about in future videos. Now the receive pipeline actually goes on the receive location. But why would you have multiple receive locations in the same port? Because a port basically is where you can turn on tracking and where you can specify different maps. So again, if you had three different companies, IBM Gateway, Dell, sending you orders, it's possible that they're big companies and they say, look, this is the type of order we're going to use. This is what we're going to send you if you want our business. And then within your system, you would translate that order using XSLT maps into your standard common purchase order, for instance. And then when the data leaves this receive port, it is going to be normally XML unless you're using the pass-through pipeline. At this point, in this little blue area here, kind of what I call, I'm calling the zone, everything in this section is XML-based messages. So you have an XML message. It's actually sent to a database called the Message Box Database. So BizTalk does rely on SQL Server, and it uses, uh, I can't remember exactly, usually there's five or seven or ten databases if you deploy everything. But there's a couple databases that are very critical, the Message Box and the management database. And so the message goes into the message box database, and then BizTalk uses something called a publish subscribe model, pub sub for short. So the message gets published, and then that's where it has to be subscribed to. And in Microsoft diagrams, you usually don't see this little box right here, but I'm calling this the subscription filters. And what you can do then is you can have many subscribers. Example, of course, is like a magazine, uh, New York or New York Times or uh, Time Magazine, for instance, has thousands of subscribers. So they publish one magazine, but thousands of people get the magazine. And so those subscriptions have to also be kept in the database. And so when a message comes in here, it basically forwards that message to all the potential subscribers. And basically, you have three types of subscribers, an orchestration, a send port, and a send port group. And so let's talk about send ports first. Um, so the message would come over here. It's still XML. 
And then as it goes to the send port, you can have an optional map there as well, where the data could get mapped back into another XML format before sending out to your trading partner or your in-house system. Then the message goes to a send pipeline, which is kind of like the opposite of a receive pipeline. For instance, on the receive pipeline, it could decrypt, and on the send pipeline, it could encrypt a message. So the message going across the internet here would be encrypted. That's one example. Then the message coming out of there, I have here the word any type of message, just like over here, these could be any type of message. So that means the message could be EDI, could be a flat file, CSV, comma separated values, positional file, um, HIPAA, healthcare data, it could be basically any type of file. And so basically you have to have these converters then that convert the file to and from BizTalk and that's basically the adapters and the uh, pipelines. So then the data gets ready to go out and just like we had receive locations coming in, they're not called that over here, basically you can only have one protocol on a send port and that protocol is going to be again like FTP, HTTP, MSMQ, SMTP, and SQL, and various other types of technical protocols. And there's also several business type of protocols, line of business application protocols. Then, whatever properties are set up on that protocol, the message basically goes out of your system and it's done. So in these send ports, you basically have filters. And that's why I actually called it over here. The filters have to be stored in the database. And the filters say, for instance, I'm interested in messages called purchase orders, or I'm interested in airline reservation messages. And so you express what types of messages you're interested in. You can also specify qualifiers, which are on promoted fields. You could say, I'm only, inter I'm only interested in purchase orders over $10,000, or I'm only interested in purchase orders for a company called IBM. And so you can have different send ports then for different companies or different trading partners if you want. Then up here we have, oh, well, let's talk about send port groups. Send port groups are simply a group of send ports, almost like an Outlook distribution list. So when you send an email to the developer group, the developer group could then have five different emails in it one day and seven emails in it the next day. So it's the send port itself that actually has the filter or the subscription. And then you simply add and take away send ports from that group, just like you do an, uh, an, ad, an Outlook uh, distribution list. Then at the top here you have orchestrations. Orchestrations by default have what's called an activating receive and when you deploy an orchestration that automatically sets up the subscription or the filter for you in the database. Then you can also have filters in your orchestration that further then filter and qualify what, type of, what types of messages you wish to receive. And orchestrations are where you basically do the the bulk of your business processes, uh, BPM, business process modeling, and, and this is where you actually implement your business procedures. So if you keep this framework in mind as you proceed throughout the upcoming videos, and we will return to this diagram or a very similar one when we start doing examples, this will help you to understand the flow of data through a BizTalk system.